welcome to the keynote podcast from Kingdom Faith. Today's message is by Pastor Colin Urquhart. Some significant moments in that time. And it would be interesting to hear what God has been saying and revealing to each one, but there isn't really time to do that. You'd also probably discovered that it's much easier to seek God when we're all together than just on your own. I'm sure you've probably had some quality times when you've been on your own, but there's a corporate dynamic, uh, like a corporate anointing, when a whole group of people really seeking after God in the way that uh, we have in the last two weeks. But I believe that what we need to do now is to see where the point to which God has brought us and the faith that he wants to see in our lives for what lies ahead. The message two weeks ago that sort of released us into what God has been doing since was a word about faith, about how God wants us to take hold of more and more of that inheritance that is ours in Christ, that even as Jesus could not contain the fullness of God in his human body, and he had to keep meeting with the Father to receive from him, which is why he was the man of prayer that he was, uh, so that is the case with us. We have this great and rich inheritance, but um, we need to keep receiving and keep downloading from God. But what I believe God wants to do this morning is to bring three three words to the forefront of our thinking. Blood, spirit, and name. Now, we've had this term, a lot of emphasis on the blood, and we've seen the great power of the blood and what that blood has accomplished in not only forgiving our sins, but purifying our hearts, bringing us to the place where we're made righteous, even perfect before God, because that power that is in the blood eradicates everything that is not of the purpose of God. So to be washed by that blood is to be cleansed. And perhaps some of you are also beginning to discovering the healing power of that blood, that that blood cleanses our bodies as well as our souls, as well as other aspects of our lives. The Holy Spirit, of course, is very much present and, and doing what he's doing amongst us, and we know how dependent we are upon the anointing of the Spirit. I'll talk about the name in a few minutes' time, because this is going to be crucial to understanding where God wants to take us next. We're all familiar with the parable, what is usually known as the parable of the prodigal son. It's not a good title. The truth version, I call it the parable of the father with two sons because all three characters are essential to the proper understanding of this parable. But if we just look for a moment at the figure of the prodigal son... You have been that son in recent weeks, not just in the last two weeks, but what God has been doing over a period of time. Now, uh, I take it by faith that you have not adopted a worldly lifestyle and lived with prostitutes and wasted your inheritance. Uh, You never got to that level of depravity away from the purposes of God. But I want you to see that you have been approaching God in the way that the prodigal son approached him. Once, as Jesus says in the parable, he had come to his senses. He came under conviction of his sin and recognized his need to be reconciled with the Father. 
he faced his sin. He faced the consequences of his sin. And so he made in his heart a resolution, I'm going to return to my father. He felt that he was only worthy of servanthood rather than sonship. So deep was the conviction of his sin that was upon him. And the more the holiness of God is manifested amongst us, the more deeply conscious you become of sin. It doesn't have to be great sin, but of anything that grieves the Father, grieves you. And you want that to be dealt with, as God wants it to be dealt with, and to be cleansed out of your life. So each of us has been coming before the Lord, and there has been this whole process of purification going on, not only of forgiveness, but of purifying our hearts. Now, let's focus on the Father for a moment. Because obviously in this parable, the Father represents God the Father. He waits for the Son to return to his ways, to come back, to come home, in effect. Now, when he sees him coming, he goes to meet him. And... This is an essential principle in seeking God, that the more we draw near to him, the more he draws near to us. He comes to meet us. And that has been happening to different ones here in different ways, but you will have been conscious of times when the Lord has come to meet you. And at that moment, he has done significant things to you. Now, in the parable, the prodigal son can't even get his pre-prepared speech out fully before the father embraces him in his love. He hugs him, gives him a kiss, as a sign of that love. Now, I, I trust that many of you, most of you, have come to the point where in some way you realize that as you've been seeking God, he has come to embrace you. That's a significant moment because like the prodigal son, you know you are not worthy of such honor. You're not worthy of such love. And that God at that moment actually initiates what he does. He chooses that moment to come and embrace you to make you, we're not talking about a sentimental or emotional experience. We're talking about that knowledge, that revelation that you are held in the love of God. Doesn't matter what has gone on before. It doesn't matter what depth of sin you were in or of disobedience. Because when you seek the Lord, even the small things seem so much bigger than you thought they were. Because you begin to understand how even the small things grieve the Lord. That in his holiness, all sin is grievous to him. Even what we would call our little sins. So there has been that depth of repentance and God has responded by reaching out to you in his love, making it clear that the past is behind you. And as far as he's concerned, whatever has gone on in the past no longer exists. 
and that what matters now is what lies ahead. Now, as he embraces the son, the father in the parable then begins to give gifts to him. And this is what God has been doing and is doing in you now. He gives him first the best robe. Now, there's two ways in which we can understand that. It is first and foremost the robe of righteousness. That in that embrace of his love, because of the power of the blood, you are robed not with your righteousness, but with the righteousness of Jesus. He is your wisdom from God, your righteousness, your holiness, your redemption. So what Jesus has, uh, what the Father has actually done is in that embrace, he then has robed you with the righteousness of Jesus. The significance of that is you now stand before the Father where Jesus stood in the days of his humanity, in the righteousness of Jesus. You stand before the Lord. In that righteousness there is no sin, which is why the blood was needed to wash away all the sin and to bring you to that point of perfection through his blood. Of course, God's best purpose is for us to live in that perfection. We all fail to do that, but that is our aim, as the scripture tells us. He then puts a ring on his finger, which is a sign of ownership. It's a sign of unending ownership. I wear two rings. This is a ring as a, a sign of my marriage, my covenant with Caroline, my wife. Uh, in the days when I got married, the, there was only one ring in the wedding service. The, the uh, husband gave, or the bridegroom gave the ring to the bride, but that wasn't reciprocated. That has been uh, introduced in more latterly. So I didn't actually have a wedding ring until my silver wedding, when my wife uh, gave me this. But that, that is a sign of the covenant between my wife and myself. This ring is, um, was also given me by my wife, a sort of apostolic ring, I call it. But it's, it's a ring that denotes my covenant with God. It may appear black, but actually all the way through here, there is a seam of red. It contains a bloodstone. And to me, that's a sign of God's call upon my life to be an apostle, to be a disciple, to be a child of God. So rings are signs of ownership. I belong to my wife and my wife belongs to me at a human level. But supremely, I belong to God, and God belongs to me. Whether you wear a ring or not is not the point, so long as you have the faith. So that ring that, that the father gave to the son is that symbol of ownership. He then puts shoes on his feet. His feet are then shod with the gospel of peace. He's made peace with his father and now he can live in the gospel of peace and actually wherever he goes, he can be a witness of that gospel and share that gospel with others. So he receives these gifts. But then the father commands that the fattened calf is slaughtered and there's going to be a feast. Now, the important thing for us to understand is the feast is not only the father's desire and purpose for the son, but he takes the son into the feast. 
the, father, the, the son goes into the feast with the father. And we're going to see what that means in a moment. But we need to understand that at that moment of embrace, clothed with the righteousness of Jesus, with your ring of sonship, of childhood, ownership by the Lord, having made your peace with him, you stand before God in righteousness, in his holiness and perfection, but his desire is for you to enjoy the feast that he has prepared for you. And we've also seen that as we seek the Lord and draw near to his throne, we do not do that simply for ourselves, but we have with us all those to whom the Lord will send us, all those whose lives will be impacted through our witness, through our ministries in the years ahead, that what God is doing in us and for us is not for us alone, but for the benefit of all those who will receive the Lord through us, receive his love, his compassion, his power, whatever. Now, that means that in the light of what God has been doing, we stand not just before him clothed with Christ, but we stand in the feast. And all the blessings of the feast are ours. And the feast, of course, stands for heaven that God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So all the blessings of heaven are ours because the Father has taken us into the feast with him. Now, then there's the elder brother. Now, all that was in that feast is also for the elder brother. When he refused to go into the feast, the father came out to him and spoke to him and said to him, everything I have is yours. But he couldn't enter into the feast. So he couldn't enter into his inheritance. He didn't have the faith to even ask for a goat. He didn't have the faith to enter the feast because of his pride, because of his judgmental attitude towards his brother, because of his self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. It's as the sin of witchcraft. So, he stands outside the feast, even though the father's desire is for him to enter the feast. Interestingly, Jesus ends the parable there. We never know whether the son, the elder one, entered into the feast or not. I think Jesus deliberately leaves that hanging in the air. So, That is a warning to everyone that you can only enter the feast on the Lord's terms. And if he was to enter the feast, even the elder brother would have to get into the position of the prodigal son. He would have to have approached the father, repented of his pride, repented of his self-righteousness, repented of his judgmental attitude towards his brother, even though the father had clearly forgiven and restored him, he would have to have humbled himself in order to then be clothed with true righteousness and not self-righteousness and be able to be taken by the father into the feast. So it's a very rich parable, but... You know, usually most people just focus on one part of what it means. Now, that means the place where God wants us to be now and always 
is in the feast. To come before the throne of God is to enter into the feast. To come into the Holy of Holies is to enter into the feast. So God wants us not simply to approach the throne in prayer or to come into the Holy of Holies every so often. This is what he desires to be our dwelling place. And the more you engage with God and and meet him in times like we've been having these last couple of weeks, the more you realize how dependent you are upon him and how rich the times of fellowship with him that God wants you to enjoy. In other words, you wouldn't want to miss an eight o'clock. Because every 8 o'clock is an opportunity to meet further with God. This week I I won't have to do much teaching because Pastor Bengt is going to be here. But I I would want to be at the 8 o'clock. It would be more convenient for me just to stay at home and work from home. But I will come into the 8 o'clock because I don't want to miss an opportunity to meet with God. And you see, God knows our hearts and God knows the motivation of our hearts. And if, if, I was, if I was to choose not to come to an 8 o'clock, I know that what God would be saying to me, in effect, so, Colin, you think something else is more important than coming and meeting with me. And I could say, well, I'll, I can meet with you at home, and I can meet with him at home, but I know that it will be richer to come and meet with him here within the context of that corporate dynamic of what God is working out. So by his grace, I will be here because I'm hungry to meet with him. And we won't, again, we won't need teaching and words and to be led for the rest of the week. We'll be getting back to engage with, with, with God one-to-one. But you see, something is happening corporately. And, and it's having a knock-on effect. We have these very wonderful testimonies uh, in the Horsham service on Sunday of people that were being baptized. And those of you who were there, notice how several of those who were being baptized met with God and had their lives transformed during the encounter nights at the beginning of term. And one of them was certainly nowhere near the Lord uh, when he encountered him during the encounter night and had his life completely turned around. That's just an indication of the more that God works in you and and among us as a people, the greater effect upon other people because of the the greater dynamic of, of, of his presence and of his power that can radiate from our lives. Okay, so let's get back to these three words. The blood, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the name. What is the significance of this? Well, by now you will know the significance of the blood. But you will also know that every day when you come and approach him, you come through the blood. That the only way into the feast is through the blood. The only way into the Holy of Holies is through the blood. The only way into that place where we can stand, where Jesus stood in the days of his humanity before the Father, and know that the Father can work through us in the same way that he worked through Jesus, that anyone who has faith in Jesus can do the same things as he did and greater things still, because we stand in that place, because of the mercy of God, because of the grace of God, because that blood has washed us clean, because we stand in the righteousness, the holiness, and the perfection of Jesus as we stand before him in the feast. And we know, of course, it is the Holy Spirit upon whom we've been completely dependent to lead us, to meet with us, that whatever God does is done in the power of the Spirit. And so we continue to live in that complete dependence upon the Spirit. Now, I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes about the name, then we're going to get back to meeting with the Lord in prayer. 
you've heard me say so often that most Christians don't understand what it means to speak and to act in the name of Jesus or to pray in his name. That people think that to pray in his name is just to use his name at the end of the prayer, you know, in the name of Jesus, and everybody says, Amen. And I pointed out to you before, that's using his name. It's not actually doing things in his name. Now, Paul, when he's writing to the Colossians, and this is another one of these scriptures I speak over my life every day, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are many scriptures, both Old Testament and New Testament, that refer to God or the name of God. Now, why is that? We can talk about the holiness of God. We can talk about the love of God. We can talk about the power of God. We can talk about his mercy. We can talk about his grace. We can talk about his authority. And as we talk about those things, we're talking about one particular aspect of God. His holiness is his essential nature. His love is the way in which he reveals his holiness and so on. But we're talking about some particular aspect of God or the way in which he operates in relation to his children. But when we use the name, we're doing something totally different from that. You see, you could talk about me in various ways. You could talk about my appearance, you could talk about this, you could talk about that, some aspect of my character, personality, or what I do. And you might be talking truth if you're talking in love uh, and not in any critical way. But you would be talking about some aspect of my being. However, my name is Colin. And that denotes the total person that I am. It doesn't denote the way I look or some particular aspect of my personality or character. It doesn't describe what I do. It describes who I am. And in Scripture, when the name of God is the phrase that is used, it means the totality of everything that God is. It's not a title. You see, you would say Colin is my title, the name that was given to me, but that name denotes totally everything that I am. So when we do something in the name of Jesus, we do it in the totality of who he is. Absolutely everything that he is, is involved in what we do in his name. It's not simply that we're using his name. So if we truly pray in the name of Jesus, we pray in the totality of who he is, in the completeness of who he is, of everything about him. Not just one aspect. We're not just saying in the love of Jesus or in the grace of Jesus or in the mercy of Jesus. If we say we do something or pray something or speak in the name of Jesus, we speak in the totality of who he is. We pray in the totality of who he is. Now, what is given us as believers is this privilege of living in Christ and Christ living in us. Why? So that whatever we say or do 
we do in the totality of who he is. Now, I'm conscious that I'm using words now. Words that have got to become meaningful to each one of you. Because that's just a description, the totality of who he is. How are you going to unpack that in your life? What you come to understand is that if you are doing something in the name of Jesus, the totality of who he is is actually at work in what you're doing. It's not you you doing it. It's not just a little bit of blessing or anointing from God to help you or to make it more effective, but actually you yourself are not operating, but the totality of who he is is at work. Important because... Jesus sends us out in his name. So next week when you go out on mission, you will go out in the totality of who he is. And what you do, um, what you say, can, if you speak in his name and act in his name and pray in his name, you're speaking and acting and praying in the totality of who he is. Everything about who he is is involved in working through you, in speaking through you, in praying through you. That's what it means to do things in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. So you see, just to use that as a phrase when we pray robs it of its real significance we don't necessarily truly believe that the fullness of who Jesus is is involved in that prayer and is therefore involved in the answer to that prayer. So you see, Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Why? Because you're asking in the totality of who I am. And if you are asking in the totality of who I am, I will do it. And he says, if you ask the Father in my name, he will do it, because you're asking in the totality of who he is. You're not asking because of who you are or for the person that you're praying for, but if you're praying in the name of Jesus, it's in the totality of who he is. And the Father will always honor the Son. And the Son will always honor the Father. Jesus makes that clear in his great high priestly prayer in John 17. So praise God. Now you function through the blood under the full anointing of the Holy Spirit that he has poured into your life so that whatever you say or do You say or do in the name of Jesus in the totality of who he is. And that's the next phase that God wants to take us all into. To realize how important it is the ways that we've been meeting with him. But that is not an end in itself. It's so that we can then go in the totality of who he is to be the blessing that he calls us to be to other people. To love them as he has loved us. And what he has done for us is to give us the totality of who he is. The completeness, the fullness. That's why the scripture says you are complete in him. You're complete in him because the totality of who he is has been imparted to you. You live in the completeness of who he is. You have come to fullness of life in Christ 
The fullness of life, you see, is the totality of who he is. It's the name of Jesus. So every time we use that phrase, in the name of Jesus, don't use it cheaply. Don't just use it as a sort of a throwaway line. Understand you're praying in the totality of who he is, everything that he is. If you believe, if you believe in the name, everything that he is is in that prayer. Everything that he is is in the words you speak and the actions you perform in his name. The Spirit is pivotal to that because only the Spirit can guide us into what to say in his name and to what to do in his name and actually what to pray in his name which is why the scripture says pray at all times in the spirit because if the spirit is not leading us, inspiring us and filling the prayer, then we will not be praying in his name even though we might use his name. So you can only pray in his name in the power of the spirit and in the anointing of the spirit and we can only do that because of the blood of Jesus. So you see, these three are the essential name, essential words of what God wants to be bringing together in our lives now as we continue to advance in his purposes. We have all the full virtue and blessings of the blood. We have the fullness of his spirit. And we have the completeness of Jesus because we have been given this wonderful privilege to speak, to act, to pray, to do everything in his name, in his fullness, in all that he is and all that he has. So let's Get to our feet and come into the middle again. We've still got plenty of time to meet with God. But I believe this morning God wants you to, first of all, thank him that he's taken you on the same, through the same process as the prodigal, that you've come out of whatever, living by his permissive will instead of his sovereign will. That's where we began the term, wasn't it? So we thank you, Lord, that you've taken us out of your permissive will. That we've let go of lots of things that you've allowed in our lives but you didn't want. And thank you, Lord, that increasingly... We desire your sovereign will. Increasingly, we are submitted to you for your sovereign will to be outworked in our lives, for you to rule and reign in us. And we praise your name. We bless your name. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We thank you for that precious blood. That blood that has cleansed us. That blood that has purified us. That blood through whom we are sanctified. That blood through whom we are consecrated to your purposes. We thank you for that precious blood, Lord that has made it possible to stand before you where Jesus stood in the days of his humanity. Thank you, Lord, that that blood has made it possible for each one of us to be clothed with righteousness. To have that ring of ownership on our fingers, spiritually speaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Pora la basandaria leto bakala sandaria leto ba. Bapara sandaria leto bakala sita di santa. Oh, ratapari leto bakala sita. Thank you, Lord, that we have peace with you. And our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We bless you. We praise you. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pura laba sandaria leto bakala sandaria leto bakala sita. Basta galaria leto bakala sita di sandaria leto bakala sita. O papara sandaria leto bakala sita di sandaria leto bakala sita. O papara sandaria leto bakala sita di sandaria leto bakala sita. O papara sandaria leto bakala sita di sandaria. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put a lava sandaria, let up a cala seat to the sandama. Oh, papara sandaria, let up a cala seat to the santu. Oh, papara sandaria, let up a cala seat to the sandama. Oh, papara sandaria. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Papara sandaria, let up a cala sandama. O papara sandaria lero bakala sita di sandama. O papara sandaria lero bakala sita di sandama. And thank you, Lord, for the precious gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the sanctifying power of your Spirit who has been at work in our lives, changing us from glory to glory. Oh, making us more and more like Jesus. And we praise you, we bless you that we could not work any transformation in our own strength. Thank you, it's all the work of your spirit. And we thank you for the anointing of your spirit. We thank you for the empowering of your spirit. We thank you for the working of your spirit within us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you've called us to live, not in the names of Jesus, but in the name of Jesus. That signifies all that he is. You've called us to pray in his name, to speak in his name, to act in his name, in the fullness of who he is. Now, Lord, work this in us, we pray. Work this in us, because, Lord, we go with you into the feast where everything, everything is done in the name of Jesus. And we praise you, Lord. Thank you for your embrace. Thank you that we go into the feast with you, that you have opened up the way for us. And we praise you. Now, Lord, we have this wonderful possibility before us. That everything we do in word or deed, we can do in the name of Jesus. In the fullness of who he is. It's awesome, Lord. It's awesome. That you've chosen the weak things of this world. Even the things that are not. To confound the wisdom of the wise. Oh, Lord. This is kingdom faith. To live in the fullness of your name. Thank you that the feast is the feast of your kingdom. In which we live and which lives in us. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. 
So thank you, Lord, for all the, all the blessings, all the fruitfulness that lies before us now. As we learn to speak, to act, to pray truly in your name. Bless your holy name. We bless that holy name. We bless your holy name. We praise your holy name. Oh, Jesus. We can live in your name, walk in your name, speak in your name, pray in your name, rejoice in your name, act in your name, heal in your name, set people free in your name, in the fullness of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for the practical outworking of your name in our lives. We praise you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We live in the totality of who you are. And the completeness of who you are lives in us. By your spirit. Through your blood. And we exalt you. We praise you. Oh, hallelujah. Kura da paria leto bacala sanduma. Papara zandaria leto bacala sitri sandaria leto bacala sinama. Oh, papara zandaria leto bacala sitri sanduma. Okay, now just go on and meet with God yourself now. Praise you, Lord.
said, oh, she said, oh, the hymns, the mixed people, she said, put it down the right, and she said, no, take it out. They said, I'm on my own, 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 I'm
Now just know that Jesus holds you. The Father holds you in that embrace. Every time you go up into the feast with him. As he holds you in that embrace, everything that is not of him just flows out of your life. Who he is, is imparted to you. And all that is a denial of who he is just passes away. And he says, you are mine. He's put that robe of righteousness upon you. Put that finger of own, a ring of ownership on your finger. Now you have peace with him. By his blood, you are made one with him. By his spirit, you can live one with him. And Jesus has many names in scripture, Lord, Savior, Bread of Life, Way, Truth, Life, the Resurrection and the Life. Many, many more, Healer, Provider, But the scripture doesn't say to do things in the names of Jesus, but in the name of Jesus, in all that he is and all that he has. So thank him that that embrace enables you then to go into the feast. Somebody once described the gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as the kiss of God upon our lives. You know, he hugged and kissed that prodigal son. Hallelujah. He has kissed your life with the Holy Spirit, the guarantee of your inheritance that is to come. Hallelujah. You have all that God says you have. Fullness of life. Made complete in him. He doesn't take a sinner into the feast. Sinners can't get into the feast. Do you remember the parable about the man that didn't have a wedding garment? He got thrown out. But you have a wedding garment because you're clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. You actually are clothed with the mantle of his glory as well, but 
We'll save that for another time. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You take us into the feast every day. And you want to teach us how to live in the feast. How to live in the fullness. And to have your fullness living in us. Everything that you are. Thank you, we don't have to be selective. But you've given us the fullness of your life. The authority to speak, act, pray, heal, deliver in your name. In the fullness of who you are. Now thank you for the spirit of faith, Lord. That enables us to believe that and to act in the good of it. This wonderful revelation of your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Papara sandalia leto pakala sita di sandalo masota di santo. Basta kalaria leto pakala sita di sandalia leto pakala sita di santo. Basta kalaria leto pakala sita di sandalia leto pakala sita di santo. O papara sandalia leto pakala sita di sandalia leto pakala sita di santo. Oh, papara sandalia. Lord, help us to see that if we can't speak and do things in your name, then we shouldn't be speaking and doing those things at all. So we thank you that when you took us to the cross and we were crucified with us, you consecrated us to the Father. Thank you that we're a consecrated people consecrated to you, consecrated to your will, consecrated to your purposes. And we give you glory, we give you honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. O papara sandaria leto pakala sita di sandama. Thank you that <clears throat> there's no limit to what you're going to work in us and through us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We will do the things, same things as Jesus did, and greater things still because of the power and authority of your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pora la basandaria leto bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria leto bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria leto bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria leto bacala sita di santo. O papara zandaria leto bacala sita di sandaria leto bacala sinama. O ratabaria leto bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandaria lero bacala sinama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandarama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandaria lero bacala sita di sando. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandaria lero bacala sinama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandaria lero bacala sinama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandaria lero bacala sinama. O papara zandaria lero bacala sita di sandama. 
O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere sandari ele no masinama. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere sandari ele no masinama. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo ma. O papara ele ro bakala si dere sandari ele ro bakala si de baranto ma. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si nama. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere sandari ele ro bakala si nama. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo ma. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo ma. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere sandari ele ro bakala si nama. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo ma. O papara sandari ele ro bakala si dere santo ma. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Now, before we finish, I want you to pray over this time that you're going to spend with Pastor Banked this week. You're going to hear a lot of testimony of God moving in amazing ways. But God doesn't want you to sit there admiring what he has done in someone else. He wants you to see these are the possibilities for your life. Right? These are the possibilities for anybody that's going to live in the name of Jesus, in the fullness of who he is. So, Father, we pray for that spirit of faith to be operating. Hallelujah. That we will know the witness of your spirit opening up for us, explaining to us, showing us, revealing to us the possibilities for our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That this is why you're sending Pastor Banked for these days. Not just to be encouraged by what you, we hear of you working in other places. But to come to the place of faith in what we believe you to do here amongst us. And through us. So that next week, Mission Week, will be a miracle week. It won't just be praying for, for um, Burgess Hill and preparing the way for the establishing of a congregation there. But Lord, it will be filled with your anointing, with your empowering, with your presence, with your power, with the fullness of who you are. Because we go in your name. And take the fullness of your name into Burgess Hill. And we praise you and we bless you. Come on, let's just pray in the spirit now. Um, Pastor Bengt and I next week won't be here with you in Burgess Hill because we're, we're both speaking together in a conference in Rome. But we're believing for the fullness of Christ to be revealed. What better place than Rome? I mean, Rome needs, <laughs> reads the fullness of truth. Amen. So, Father, we praise you, we bless you, that wherever we go, in your name, we take the fullness of who you are into that situation. And we, we pray, Lord, that Burgess Hill is going to be, something is going to be sown into Burgess Hill next week that is going to change Burgess Hill in the coming months and years. And Lord, you're going to sow something new in Rome next week at that conference. And we praise you. We bless you. We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. Come on, I want to hear a great shout of praise for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. Papara zandaria lero bakala sidri sanduma. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, th I don't think that was good enough. I think we need a much greater, a much greater shout of praise than that for the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Bless your holy name. Yes, 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 yes. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We're beginning to sound a little bit more like revival. It's a little bit more each week. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's where we're going. We're going all the way. Amen. We're not stopping on the verge of something. We're going right into God's best purposes. Amen. And you know wonderful things are going to break out at faith camp. Uh, you've got to look ahead, you know, all the time and say, oh, yeah, Lord, come on. Come on, come on. Thousands are going to get blessed. Thousands are going to meet with you just like we're meeting with you. See, if, if people give a week of their lives to go and seek God, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to meet with them. And if they seek him like this, he's going to meet with them like this. Amen. And we're going to take this anointing into faith camp. But of course the anointing will be much stronger by then. Amen. We're just in the shallows. We're going to get into the deep water in the coming weeks and months. But the shallows are pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> but we're going to launch out into the deep. Because that's what Jesus told the disciples. Launch out into the deep and you'll find there's a catch of fish there. Harvest, multiplication. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources by Kingdom Faith and for our other audio and video podcasts, please visit kingdomfaith.com.